Hey everybody, Tyler here at The Movie Beat, back with another video update. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you some thoughts on a brand new one that I just got back from the theaters and seeing. This. So this is just from my reaction. Um, I wanna share with you guys and hopefully encourage you to check out this new melodrama romance film called Endless Rain or Waiting for Rain. I don't think it has its English title like officially solidified yet. Uh, but you'll definitely know some of the actors that are in this one. Kang Hanul, you probably saw him in um, Forgotten or Midnight Runners. Chun Woo Hee is in this. She was in Han Gong Ju. She's the girl that snapped at the end of Sunny. Um, and Kang Soo Ra is in this. She was also in Sunny. So that was pretty cool. I think you guys would definitely get into this film if you like melodrama and romance. Uh, I actually really felt pretty good at coming out of this one uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, it's a pretty layered movie in my opinion, even though it does suffer from some cliches. It's one of those that really kind of gets you thinking a lot when you come out of it. This one was directed by Cho Jin Mo, who brought us uh, Making Family and The Suicide Forecast, which I had not seen before, so really nothing to base this one off of. I knew it was going to be a pretty light romance film. It's got a general rating, and I kind of got the vibe from uh, a few like teasers that I saw. They, this playing in the theater like before some other movies that I saw in the past couple weeks so I was kind of expecting kind of a, a classic the classic vibe or um, even like an Il Mare because I knew this was going to have something to do with like sending letters back and forth and a little bit of time changing um, and I was pretty spot on but I was worried that this was going to be maybe kind of copycat-ish and like I said it does kind of suffer from a few cliches but it is very much its own film, and I definitely think this is one, um, like I said, if you like melodrama and romance, worth checking out. So it's about a character named Young Ho, who this is his second year spent studying to get a good score on the university entrance exams. And if you know anything about Korea, this is a country who many, many, many people um, actually do this. So he's probably like 20 or 21 and he's still studying because he needs a high enough score to go to a university that's in Seoul because your chances of success in life if you graduate from one of these universities is projected to be so much higher than if you go anywhere else so there's a lot of pressure on people to do really well on this test it's once a year and it's pretty intense and people actually put down quite a bit of money as they're studying and they basically become studying machines to get through this because it is very competitive. I would say that he doesn't really have a ton of aspirations. He's not the, like a natural uh, studier and he, this lifestyle may not be more suited to his nature. He is the son of a leather worker, a craftsman I would say who owns his own shop, more traditional style and he's also very good with his hands. He's a very artistic person and he's a romantic at heart. So studying like super deep in science and math, it's just not really jiving with his nature. But it's his second year in and there's a girl in his class named Sujin who recognizes him from the previous year. So you know she is also in a similar boat, struggling to get a great score on this test to be satisfactory to get into one of these great universities. So she has a little thing for Young Ho and kind of follows him around. Um, might seem a little bit annoying to him at first, but they do grow into a very uh, unique friendship. But unfortunately for Sujin, it is more like a one-sided love because there is a girl for Young Ho that he just cannot get out of his head. And it's an acquaintance from his childhood elementary school days. And so he asks one of his friends if he can get her address to send her a letter because he has something of hers that he would like to return. And this sort of kicks off the whole plot of this film because Young Ho actually does write this letter to this childhood friend of his and she's actually living in Busan and the person who receives the letter is the sister of her. Her name is So Hee, played by Chun Woo Hee. So the reason So Yun cannot answer the letter is because she is bedridden in the hospital and she like cannot move, she cannot talk, but she can kind of communicate with, you know, some tapping or some bells. So he goes and asks her sister, she, so he's a really good sister and she takes a lot of care for Soyeon who is in the hospital. And so she asks her like, hey, there's this guy from your childhood who's 
kind of trying to reach out to you through this letter. Do you remember him? And she's like, who? Like she has no memory of this guy. So instead of writing like, sorry, I don't remember who you are, Sohi actually decides to pretend that she is her sister and writes back like, hey, you know, I remember you. It's, you know, nice hearing from you, blah, 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 blah. And signs her name, Soyeon. Young was freaking out like, yes, he's established contact with this um, childhood friend and, you know, tries to keep the correspondence going. And of course, uh, Sohi, it's kind of fun for her and she's helping her sister kind of live a little bit more through these letters. And the fact that her sister is such a bright force for this man um, living in Seoul, Youngho, is kind of bringing some joy to Sohi as well. And so they continue this correspondence. And at that point, I was like, okay, I just watched EYE Shinji's last letter. Um, in that film, there was a writer who was obsessed with kind of his younger crush. He wrote a book about her and he ends up writing a letter to her to kind of figure out what she's doing. And the daughter of the woman replies because the woman just recently passed. And so the daughters and her friend sign their mother's name. And so they keep corresponding with this man who thinks it's the real woman. And I was like, ah, like I just watched this movie. But thankfully, once this correspondence gets going, the film actually takes a different turn. And that was the uh, very fresh part about this movie. And that's when I was like, okay, I am, I'm into a new movie now. Young Ho, actually, we get to see him more how he deals with this one-sided love up in Seoul with uh, Sujin. So Sujin is really throwing all the stops out there and trying to get uh, Young Ho to reciprocate, you know, what she's, delivering to him and he's just so fixated on these letters that he's writing to this childhood friend and so he who is writing back to him you know puts a glimmer of hope in the sky that um you know for now she cannot meet him but the day that comes that it rains on december 31st that will be the day that they can meet and so it's kind of you know they're they're both very art romantic at, at heart so Yongho just like is over the moon okay you know there's a chance and so he really kind of just puts all his eggs in that basket every December 31st he goes to where they're supposed to meet and you know hopes for rain uh, and I think this movie is a lot about hope it's a lot about one directional love it's it's a very interesting way that they wrote these characters because Sujin, she, like I said, loves Young Ho so much, but he is not giving anything back because he loves Soyeon. But Soyeon has no idea who Young Ho is. She doesn't remember him from her childhood. But Sohi is actually kind of starting to like Young Ho. But of course, Young Ho has no idea who Sohi is because that's Soyeon's sister. He never met her. And so everybody is kind of pursuing a, a hope, a dream. I think so he is probably more on the hope and dream part for her sister. There's also a man that's kind of like the Sujin character for Sohi's side of the story in Busan, who is a regular at the bookstore. They call him the bookworm, who just kind of feels like he can't really relate to a lot of people and life is alone. And so it kind of maybe he feels maybe a little bit hopeless in some sense. This movie does kind of have that dual nature to it with its characters. Young has got the father, so he's got the mother, you know, like Young has got the brother, so he's got the sister. To Young Ho, Sujin is kind of like this periphery character with a um, certain type of love and affection towards towards each other and for Sohi it's like there's a bookworm that you know it's a, it's a different kind of love but there's an affection there it's kind of a mirror image of each other and there was a time in this movie where I was like this is Young Ho and Sohi are like the same character I just felt like the spirit was so similar in a lot of different ways but in that way that makes this movie very interesting to me like looking back on it and you know thinking about it going through so because this movie is so good to look at and so good to listen to. It's got a great soundtrack. I love the music in it. There was one part where I was like, this is like a cover from one of the theme songs in the classic. So I was like, I knew this was gonna be kind of like the classic. And I think it actually turned out a very, very solid um, melodrama romance film. And if you guys are fans of these actors, you're gonna be blown away. Kang Hanu for me, uh, this actor, I think he's almost 30 years old, but 
Because this movie begins um, in 2011 and then it goes eight years in the past when he's studying to try and get a good score on this university entrance exam, I felt like he was trying to act um, a little bit too young and immature, uh, you know, to try and fit that time. So it, it was a little bit of a weird mismatch at first. And I really liked it when he was being in, in that more mature mode, uh, when he kind of got um, past trying to sell that he was 20. So after that, it was really great. And especially towards the end, you just felt so much like the hope that he had, um, that the light that this uh, woman, Soyeon, gave to him and just his desperation to one day for that rain to come and that he would be able to meet her. Um, just the look in his eye was really gold. It was just really great. So chun hee for me was really uh, solid throughout. She was gentle. She was kind, kind of soft-spoken. She really helped for this film to feel kind of like a kind-hearted melodrama. So I thought it really helped to, to give this film kind of that like pure feeling. Kang Sora, I feel like, was probably the most complex performance uh, just because of her one-sided love for uh, Yong Ho. It was just so obvious and that resistance that she that she faced because she was really face-to-face -face with him. Um, yeah, Yong Ho, on the other hand, even though it was one-sided, it was long distance and he really was never in person with uh, the person that he thought he was writing to. So. Her just being right next to it, it was, you know, just out of her reach. I could really feel the internal struggle that she had. So even though sometimes I felt like, why, what is, what does she have to do with this whole like dynamic here? Um, it turned out to be a really important character for when you try to connect like the arrows of the direction that the love was going, um, and it never comes full circle. So she, she actually gives like, for me, one of the most convincing performances in the film. And there are also a lot of melodrama romance South Korean films that do jump back in time between two different time periods uh, to tell its story. So, I mean, how many times am I saying this? We've got Ditto, Il Mare, the classic. There's just so many. And so it's like, okay, some parts of this movie are not going to feel super fresh. I'm very happy that this movie, again, moved away from some of the cliched parts the way that it opened up to have a very, very solid um, ending in my opinion. Even though it kind of pushed a little bit towards fantasy, it was really good filmmaking and just the way that they put this story together overall. I do think this movie has a pretty good message in it as well as um, the way that it shows that not everybody has to kind of follow that laid out career path for success. There are other options, especially for people that may not fit the mold. Both these main characters, Young Ho and So He, do not fit the mold necessarily, and they can find happiness and success doing something a little bit different. Maybe something a little bit low key and something a little bit more um, that fits their their styles. I think they were both very lucky to have great parents in this one. That um, they don't really seem to be pressuring them or like making them go that route. These parents are definitely flexible and letting these um, their their children become their own person and in a natural way because they do show the um, character young he's got an older brother that perhaps did follow that path and it, you, you learn in this film that things do not turn out like perfect for this character so you know it does show that it is not guaranteed happiness um, certain things arise unexpected events um, kind of got to be flexible. So this movie does seem to be talking a lot about hope and the things that make you happy and uh, really appreciating those around you that help support you even though you don't have a dream. It's like you don't have to have everybody supporting your dream so much as supporting you the person and um, I really appreciated that message in this story and I think everybody who gives this movie a chance is going to find something great to take away from it. You're not going to be bawling your eyes out, but there are some very strong emotional moments in this one. It makes for a great, gentle, but, but strong and visually very pleasing melodrama romance film. So definitely check it out. I think this one is pretty poetic at heart and I, and I really like the characters in it. So I'm going to rate it a 7.5 out of 10 check it out and let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below remember if you guys like these con this kind of content these reactions these reviews please like and subscribe let me know you know keep keep it up 
and uh, I really appreciate it. So until next time, I'm Tyler here at the Movie Beat. Keep watching movies.